said, Ya Rasul Kareem. And be careful what you say, shaitan, shaitan is listening to everything. So never express things from your mouth that you should never express because shaitan is listening and fiercely will come after whatever you're expressing. If he knows your weaknesses and he hears you articulate your weakness, well that's got to be the worst philosophy you can imagine. Going into a kickboxing fight and you keep saying, my knee hurts, my knee hurts. What do you think that guy is going to do when he fights you? To kick your knee. Keep it to yourself, stay quiet what your doubts and your, your philosophy in your mind and keep a way of faith and the practices of faith. So that to be free from shaitan now coming after you even more fierce inshaAllah. What we got? As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, what drags a person towards hypocrisy? Uh, when they come to faith. <coughs> if you have to read the, the levels of the soul, when we said the, the, I think the seven levels of the soul in conjunction with the realities of Surah Fatiha, <coughs> the first phase is that nafsa amara is that they just completely do everything bad. They think it's good. So they do every type of horrific action thinking it's good and that's it. But when Allah wants to take somebody out of amara, then they begin to do all of these actions with all the bad actions. They have to acknowledge the hypocrisy. That becomes now the state of acknowledging the sickness so that they can begin the process of healing. If someone doesn't acknowledge the sickness, then means they're double ignorant. They're ignorant of the fact of their ignorance, that's very dangerous. So as soon as they start to come to guidance, they say, no I want to change, I want to do good. Then they take their accounting and realize, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm saying like this, I'm doing like this, I'm saying like this, I do like that. And they have to acknowledge the inner hypocrisy. Not that they fooled themselves that they're great now but all of the things that are wrong and then they have to attack that hypocrisy. And that becomes the tafakkur and the muhasaba and accounting of oneself. Every night account. You sit in the meditation at the end of the night, Ya Rabbi, what did I do wrong? Not, not what didn't come because I wanted but what did I do wrong of the people, places and interactions that I… Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. And what did I do wrong in that? And then you begin to make your accounting. I talked bad to this, I said like this, I did like that, I did like this. And then you identify all of these characteristics so that you don't do it again the next day. Because if we have characteristics that we do every day, every day then the, the change never happens. So the change only happens when I identify something wrong. Talk bad, aggressive, violent, angry, whatever these things are that we do on a daily basis. And then when at night we take our hisab and we connect and the reason that you have to connect with the presence of the shaykh is so that you don't lie to yourself that, no actually everything was fantastic for the day. Because you and your nafs are sitting there then that, that's of no value. It's that you have to visualize the shaykh is in front of you and that I'm asking for hisab of what I did wrong, feeling the presence of the shaykh and then the truthfulness comes out. You weren't good and the shaykh will inspire you did like that, you said like this, you did like that. But you with yourself and nafs you're going to say, no actually we're fantastic, I'm so upset that people bothered me. I say, what? I say, yes. And then if they have no salawats playing, 
This one bothered me, that one bothered me, that's it. I'm the, like the best person. Allah inshaAllah punish those people who bothered me. It's like, what? That wasn't tafakkur. So that's not the reality. Tafakkur is, no, I'm connecting with the shaykh, that the madad of the shaykh is present, I'm playing my salawats. Ya Rabbi, inspire my heart for really what I've done wrong today. And then they can take notes and, you know, I bothered this, bothered this, bothered that, bothered this. So it's a truth protector because that presence inspires you, no, 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 this is what you did wrong. And then that becomes the daily accounting, every night accounting, a night accounting. Then you become, as you, inshaAllah, you clean, then you have less of those things to work on. But at first there's going to be a long list. And then you begin to realize, oh, I'm, I'm not here to correct other people. I'm here to make sure this list is very short and my grave is in, filled with light. Oh, I gotta fix this, I gotta fix him, I gotta fix her, I gotta fix that, I gotta, you know, put this person straight. Your list is going to be very long of what you did wrong. But when my, my list becomes shorter and shorter by caring about myself, fix myself, fix my character, and uh, try to be good talking, more patient, more calm, try to help those people whom are in difficulty. This list becomes shorter and shorter so then the, the accounting becomes less intense and begin to become shorter. And then you know that you're working on yourself, inshaAllah your grave filled with light. Then you begin to pray and do your awrads and have an abundance of light. And then it becomes more of meditating and, Ya Rabbi, dress them, dress them, dress them, dress them. Because you're not always trying to fix all of your account, you get your account in order and now you have an abundance to pray for those whom you love and put their account, relieve them of difficulty. Ya Rabbi, relieve this one of difficulty. But if you're too busy only having to fix your accounting, you have to get your books in order. So that's the difficult part because nobody really wants to look at themselves and how they interact and how they work. And not everything going to be perfect, there's going to be salt and pepper everywhere. There's going to be one who believes, one who doesn't believe. It's not your business. Your business was to perfect your character and a training on how you're going to interact with people. So same as look at the shaykhs like there are people believing and next day they say, we're not believing. Wa ahlan wa sahlan, you know, it's like uh, those revolving doors in the building. Yeah, who comes? Comes to the door. But at the same time someone's going. The door has… Uh, <laughs> have you seen the doors like this? <laughs> yeah. There's always someone new coming through the door and somebody <laughs> who's going out the door. Yeah. Because you don't know how long somebody's destined. They say, oasis from Allah Some drink for a day at this oasis. Some for five minutes, some for five years, maybe some for fifty years if they're lucky. That Allah wrote for them that you live and die drinking from that oasis. So alhamdulillah, but you don't be worried about who's going through this revolving door, just pray you're stuck there. That's all that's important. Just like your own family, right? You can't make sure everybody's completely get their head and put them into sujood and say, no, you have to make sujood, no, <laughs> you can't do anything with your family nor can the shaykh do with anyone who's coming and going. That's their test that Allah gives to them, how long they have in that presence, how much they were able to absorb, how many tests they were understanding. And those whom come, they come, who go, who go. And you'll find the same in your own homes. They come with you, they pray with you, they believe with you, later in life they say, ahlan wa sahlan, thank you very much. And uh, I have a, my own journey to go on. <laughs> so that's up to them, that's whatever Allah wrote. But still your character remains good and loving because the shaykh is always there. That's why it's like a revolving door, they will run out <laughs> one minute, there's no other game in town. So whether it's two weeks or two, two years, they come walking back through the door because you tried to keep the character always to be loving. And then that's the only condition they have to worry about is that their grave is good, they kept their character loving, they tried their best and that's what Allah is looking and accounting them for, that keep your character good and you know, be a source of, of Allah's rahmah. And they teach and deport that character to their students, that it's no different. If the shaykh's going through that test, you're going to have that test at home too. That's life, inshaAllah. 
Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. Can people take your light because there was a fault in it, like hypocrisy? And use it to increase your sins? Similar. Can people take my light? Can take away each other's light. Yeah, by backbiting them. <coughs> we describe those talks. Means that you come for this ocean of light and you take these realities and then you think you're clever, <laughs> I don't need to take the tariqah anymore. And I go, <laughs> I go out, <laughs> I got their knowledges, ah, I got these realities, I'm gonna go. And then all those sins a, a, a push into your heart that he's now going to deplete your account like a hacker. How Allah then depletes your account? Yuqibat, right? He allows the shaitans to come after you. As soon as the shaitans come after you, you begin to qaybat and you begin to talk bad, 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 your account was now hacked. When you log in there's nothing in your account because the only thing that takes away hasanat is qaybat, right? If you walked away and stayed quiet, you keep that barakah because too much you stayed. But if there's a badness in someone and the badness is causing them to walk, means the shaitan is playing with you. You think shaitan going to leave you alone with that light and with what knowledges you have? No. So it means Allah sends then a hacker, allows the shaitans come after you, you then you see that person, all sorts of bad words coming out against the shaykh, all sorts of bad things, all sorts of bad things, means their account is all depleted. They have no more haqqaiqs listed in their account because it's a hadith that your actions when you talk bad against somebody, Allah will take all your goodness and give it to them and then will take the sins of that person and give it to you. But the, the sins that the shaykh carries are very heavy. So that can collapse a lot of people and make all sorts of very bad things happen to them. But at the same time the shaykh took back all the goodness. So that's, that's how Allah will deplete someone's account. That's why it's in that program. Otherwise any good deed you do, it stays with you for all of eternity. And you do a bad deed, that doesn't take away the light that Allah gave to you. So you go out make a sin and do something incorrect, it never takes away the light that you earned. And the only way to deplete realities and these lights is qaybat and bad, back, bad mouthing and spreading rumors, false rumors and, and gossiping. Even it's true you're, you're slandering somebody. So both slander and backbiting will deplete and empty the account of the servant, inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. In regards to your talk the other day yeah. about children, yeah, children, how to get vulgarity out of children when it is very entertaining to them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's entertaining for them to speak vulgar? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, this is this difficulty because of the amount of music and, and videos and all the things that they're exposed to, <clears throat> to r r destroy their modesty. So that, that was based on the talk that we gave for modesty, humility and faith. When the modesty of the servant, when the sh shaitan wants to… he knows the system, right? That's why they teach, they're teaching you what shaitan is doing, that's why he's very angry when the shaykhs teach. He understands these three friends are close. Faith, his two dearest friends is modesty and humility and faith is the strongest. So shaitan never comes to fight the strongest one, he fights the weakest one. Right? Shaitan doesn't come to you on Instagram and take away your faith, hey, you could take away your faith, denounce your faith, you go to the next thing, no problem. What he does is say, uh, why don't you start exposing yourself, you'll get more likes. So now he went after your modesty, you know, can't you just expose more? If you expose more it'll be more fashionable for people, people will tune in, oh, people will listen to you. Make yourself like this or make yourself like that. 
Why? Because he knows that if I take the modesty of the person away, what they're going to have? They're going to lose their humility, so then humility will be destroyed. When you take modesty away, humility goes and arrogance comes, pride comes. Then those same immodest people say, I have faith in my heart, don't worry. That's a shaitan playing with you, there's no faith in your heart when modesty is gone. So that's just an excuse because those other people that's all they say, faith in our heart, don't worry about it. No, that's a lie, faith doesn't enter the heart like that. Faith has two other friends that have to be there. If they're not there then faith is left also. So shaitan will pull the weaker one, the easier one to take from you. So our life is a continuous, keep yourself modest, keep struggling with modesty, keep struggling with this oceans of humility so that the faith will enter or the faith will stay. But the faith can be pulled through these two channels. So means then these, these children are being bombarded to be immodest, immoral because of the extent of the words that are being used, the, the videos that are being propagated, why? So when they talk this bad way they also entered into not humility because nobody's humble that talks like that. They begin to, to talk very bad and they begin to become arrogant and pride and boastful. So then all these bad characteristics are, are entering in. So what do you do? If they're already old enough then you know, watch the shaykh, meditate, do your practices. But you know the, the, the training should have been at the young age, at two, three, four, five, six, seven with love, with love and training, love and training, love and training. But at an older age it becomes more difficult because now there are more rebellious years in which they want to set their own path, their own understanding. So inshaAllah you have to be patient and keep trying to teach, keep trying to teach. And you're patient with what Allah gives. If Allah gives one to believe and one not to believe then what can you do? It's a test. Not everything is always going to be great and hundred percent. Whatever Allah has written, has written. And the ones in, in general when people ask that, why some people believe and some people don't believe? He say, well if He made everyone believe there would be no reality of believing then we would all be angels. He could have just made us all angels again. The concept of me believing and someone not believing then has a deep reality because if there's just two of us on this earth Allah says, I want you to believe and then I'm going to write for this one not to believe. And as they believe and become stronger and closer and closer they ask, Ya Rabbi what is it that you want from me? Help the one that doesn't believe because I don't need anything from you, you're not going to give me any power. Now that you believe, help the one that didn't believe. So now you have someone to serve because if he believed too and I believed then we're like angels, then there's nothing here to do. So the one who has helps the one who has not. Whether it's in their faith, within everything in their being is to help those that don't. And if the one that you want to help doesn't care to listen, go out and help other people who don't have belief and do da'wah. Right? So then that's why we tell you, click on the da'wah, click on this, click on this, click on this. If you're not getting it that's unfortunate. If you're trying to do da'wah to your children they're not listening, well because you're the parent they don't want to listen to you. So what was the advice the shaykh did? He said, get our articles and begin to post everywhere, put it into forums, put in… Isn't that da'wah? And if you guide enough people and, and Allah sees that you're doing so much da'wah, so much da'wah, so much da'wah, the light of guidance will go back inshaAllah into the family. The rewards go back into the family because now you have something in your hisab. otherwise what did you do for tariqah? That you, you th you're expecting so much but what did you do? So that, that's, you know, what was your life of service? Oh I didn't serve anything. I ate the food there, congratulations. But <laughs> we have to have in our hisab like, what did you do?
To me, I lived a life of service. Went out and fed 10,000 people and, and put out 200,000 pounds of food and, and did this and did this and did this. I lived a life of service. The account should be very big with Allah that when you make munajjad and you make du'a you have something in your account. Otherwise the account has what in it and, you, and you're making so many complaints. So that's why they say it's so easy that click. Send out links, do dawah, teach and, and teach people about the way, about the reality. So all of these are then a means, go out when they're giving out the food, there's so many people in difficulty. Now they see the Muhammadan way and Fatima Zara coming with loads of food, loads of meat. You don't think it's affecting their belief? Think, oh we're from our people we never caught anything. How these big bearded Muslim people are showing up with crab legs? <laughs> their, their pickup today was crab legs, <laughs> exotic seafood or $40, $50 worth <laughs> of food showing up to people's homes, here's your food. You don't think that's like the amazing dawah, right? With big beards, your kufis and blue jackets, like the Vikings. <laughs> the Vikings showed up and <laughs> here's food. Yeah, people said, it's amazing. My own faith did nothing for me. Look, these guys are coming and delivering all this food for me, oh, they, they're going to investigate Islam. So this is, this is the, the remedy for our sicknesses and our difficulties. Eh? Why do you not do that? And then that barakah come into your homes. Otherwise if you go back and look and say, what is it exactly that I do for this way, for Allah, for Prophet for tariqah, nothing. So why are you expecting so much back? You did nothing, be happy with nothing. But if you're going to do, then you have something in your hisab. You know that when you're asking Allah your account is right. You know, you give a hundred thousand pounds of food, I'm sure you have some, some clout with your du'as, right? You feed 10,000 people, you put out this, you put out that, you put out this, things. So then the accounts, they're, they're motivating people, put your faith in action. Then when you have your faith in action, there is something in your account. And we all need those things in our account for all the du'as and all the difficulties our, our loved ones will be going and are going through, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. So should we make more social media accounts with your picture? Yeah, the social media accounts, definitely. It aggravates all the people who don't like us. <laughs> right? Don't put your face on anything because that's, that's not the, the tariqah teaching. Don't use bad handles. You know what a handle is? Is bad name of your YouTube account because you're asking for du'as, you're asking for all these things and you have all these bad names. You have to imagine that the presence of Prophet is watching the channel, watching the comments, watching through the eyes of the shaykh is watching. If the shaykh is watching then Prophet's eyes through their eyes. And you have these nasty names on your YouTube channel. You know, if you want to be nasty go somewhere else and use that nasty account. Open up a nice polite account just for watching zikr and put Muhammadan way and put the shaykh's picture. You teach basic manners that you would do. Why would you put something nasty as your name and keep making a, a comments in the zikr? People have to have a shame and have good character. Same for then social media accounts. Make Muhammadan way social media accounts, thousands of them <laughs> so they don't know which one to close, <laughs> right? Because it become popular <laughs> they say, let's close this guy's account. It, uh, they, they, and they shadow banned our video for talking about not smoking. They said, this is against our, our guidelines of this organization. Mm -hmm. So yes, as a, as a preventative me measure make Muhammadan way accounts, you know, a thousand accounts. Make three accounts for every 300 people who are watching now, but tomorrow there'll be a thousand accounts. Oh. Yeah. And every time you load and make a new account, they allow a new account to go semi-viral where you may get a hundred thousand views. Why? Because they want you to be motivated to post more often. But once they see it's us, the next day will be lower views because <laughs> they, 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 they want in immorality 
and uh, non, non humility, they want the opposite for their algorithm. But as soon as you post a new account, put the video out that we have on the short videos, you may see it go $100,000. We have Erdogan has that, we have somebody online that's emailed and it's like, I got 100,000 views. So that was the formula we told you, if you keep making new accounts and put the videos, it may go to 100,000 because they'll let it to shoot out. So yeah, these are, our computer guys know all these algorithms and a lot of the people watching know all of these things, so be active. If that goes into your hisab and goes into your account, you have some credibility with Allah So it doesn't take anything the whole day long, post social media, go to a new Muhammad, take an article, post it. Go to Telegram, social media groups, post something. They don't like it, turn off the comments, That's not, don't worry about the follow-up of not liking, liking. You see on our TikTok all the, the angry people were coming and cursing that, why are you doing zikr? It's okay, they, they went away, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, can you talk a little bit about parent respect? Parents love that <laughs> subject. <laughs> Tell my kid he's sitting right here now watching <laughs> to respect me, bow down to me. I say, okay, you have to respect your parents. <laughs> No doubt they have to respect the parents but w more important was did you raise them with love? Mm -hmm. So that's why the, the subject was started the other way, that uh, a society in which doesn't raise their children with love, you know the first few years of their life you have to love them, keep them close to you, nourish them, nurture them, give them and as a result they build a bond with the parent, system of separating the child, yelling at the child, hitting the child, you broke their madad. And as a result of breaking the madad, it's very hard to bring that back. It's very hard to bring that understanding back. So that, that's, the, that's what was the importance of understanding to be loving, loving, loving. And then later in their lives when they're seven and older, you begin to teach them, this is right, this is wrong, this is right, this is wrong. So that's the system in which Prophet gave to us. So if we raise them with love, then by the time we're teaching them from these oceans of love and, and guidance and what's correct, what's wrong, then there should be an adherence to those teachings and to that reliance upon that relationship with the parents. So then naturally respect would be taught and, and all the good mannerisms would be taught. But again in our life it's how much did we put into it is usually what we get out of it. So if we put a lot of time to be loving, to be nourishing, to, to all of these things, it's going to come because it was already planted there. But a lot of cultures were very rough and you know were very aggressive. And then later you, you made this cub that looked so cute to become like a full-fledged wolf with a lot of aggression and ability to like bite you in a second. Because that's what they do with these animal fights. They take these animals and they condition them so horribly and so aggressively so that they're trained to come out and to fight. And any, any creation is like that based on conditioning. If you're conditioning this creature to be aggressive then don't be surprised when it comes to bite you. So these are, you know, and if it's not and you did everything right then what can you do other than pray to Allah amri in Allah, in Allahu basirun bil ibadah, Ya Rabbi for verily you see my condition and that, you know, grant a najat and grant a salvation and that that condition is coming then meditate, contemplate, Allah wants that connection. When that connection is so strong, so strong with the light, then inshaAllah when these difficulties come and that connection is strong, the light of that connection begins to dissolve that characteristic. Because luminous people, very aggressive, angry people kind of melt in their presence because it's hard for the falsehood to come close to that truth like that. So that's also a sign that build the self, build the self, build with these lights so that whatever falsehood is in that person making them angry and aggressive 
can begin to be spiritually sort of melted, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. In the sharaf al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa ashabi kiram wa lam shaykhina fi tariqat al Nashbandiyat al Aliyya. Khasatan Ruhi Imam Tariqa Ghabta Khaliqa Shah Nashban Muhammad Abay Sayyid Bukhari Sultan Awliya Shaykh Abdel Faiz Daghestani Sayyid Shaykh Muhammad Naz Ahmad Al Haqqani Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani Shaykh Adlan Kabani Shaykh Muhammad Adil Mawd Khaliq Al Khujtawani Sahib Zaman Sayyid Muhammad Al Mahdi Alayhi Salaam Ruhullah Sayyid Naiz Alayhi Salaam Sayyidullah Sayyid Naiz Alayhi Salaam Thumma Sayyidina Abaka Sadiq Sayyidina Ummah Sayyidina Uthman Imam Al Hassan Alayhi Salaam Imam Al Hussain Alayhi Salaam Sayyidatina Fatima Al Tazari Salaam سائر وسادتنا وصدقنا الفاتحة.